structure whole structure of hollow enzyme it is made up of apo enzyme and cofactor so hollow enzyme is equal to apo enzyme plus cofactor okay and the uh, apo enzyme you know that the enzyme that is enzyme so what i have told that they are proteinaceous structure enzymes are proteinaceous structure and there are two enzymes there are so many enzymes but there are basically two enzymes there are non proteinaceous non proteinaceous you might have known about that of ribozyme and another one is that of a ribonuclease p okay so these are that of non proteinaceous so apo enzyme part are the proteinaceous these are the protein part this is the protein part of the enzymes as enzymes are made up of proteins so that the protein part is apo enzymes hollow enzyme means apo enzymes plus cofactor apo enzymes are the proteinaceous part these are the protein part but cofactor cofactor divides into that is cofactor divides into three types three groups one is that of prosthetic group prosthetic group one is that of prosthetic group that is first one prosthetic group prosthetic group means it is the basement it is the basement of enzyme it is the base and it is tightly fixed with the enzymes this part prosthetic group is tightly fixed with the enzymes okay and it is for all times prosthetic group is for all times in enzymes whether catalytic reaction going on or not okay so that about non protein enzymes okay that ali bhai i am just telling you that have you understood that hollow enzyme is equal to apo enzymes plus cofactor apo enzyme means hollow enzyme means it is total enzyme and apo enzymes is the protein factor that is it is a protein part cofactor are that of a non protein part so that means enzymes are made up of not only protein but also some other factors some other non proteinaceous factor so that is called cofactor cofactor include prosthetic group prosthetic group second one is that of coenzyme coenzyme and another one is that of metal ions metal ions okay so that apo enzymes can be attached with that of prosthetic group that means prosthetic group always attached with that of apo enzymes it is a friend for all weathers all weather friends that means in time of need in time of not need in time of uh, that means happiness in time of sorrowness prosthetic group is always attached with apo enzyme but coenzyme is selfish one okay it is selfish one that means it will it will be present at the whenever the catalyst that is reaction is going on when enzymes are engaged in that of involved in that of a reaction that means in a biochemical reaction at that time coenzymes are present otherwise they are not present and when coenzymes come out from that of enzymes from that of hollow enzymes or it will have to that is break the relation with apo enzymes then that is there will be no chemical the biochemical reaction and the metal ions are there are some ions that mean there are some metal ions on which some apo enzymes are dependent because without the support of metal ions they can do that a biochemical reaction so what you have known up to uh, a time that uh, hollow enzyme is made up of apo enzyme and a cofactor apo enzyme is the protein part cofactor is a non protein part that is non protein okay this one is the protein part this one non protein part cofactor divides into three types prosthetic group coenzyme and metal ion that means prosthetic group is firmly attached with that of a apo enzyme but coenzyme is not firmly attached it is loosely attached 
I have told you that the twins at the time of biochemical reaction, when enzymes are involved in biochemical reaction, coenzymes attach with apoenzymes. When there are no biochemical reaction, when enzymes are not involved in such process, coenzymes will, that means they will come out from that of apoenzymes. So, prostatic group are firmly attached with the apoenzyme. But coenzymes are loosely attached with the apoenzymes. So, prostatic groups are the friends of all weathers. That means friends for all types, but it is friends for only that of happiness. So, it is the selfish friend is coenzymes. And metal ions are the some supporting ions for because apoenzymes depend upon some certain metal ions for carrying out that of biochemical reaction. Okay, students, you will have to know in details, but I am just telling you that follow enzymes, follow enzyme students, follow enzyme is equal to dash plus dash. Apoenzyme plus cofactor. That is protein part is apoenzyme. Apoenzyme is a protein part. And the cofactor is that of a non-protein part. Okay. Cofactor is divided into three groups. What are these three groups? First one is coenzyme and metal group. Coenzyme and metal group. Coenzyme and metal ion. Now we'll have to know about that of a apoenzyme. Apoenzyme, you see that apoenzymes, apoenzyme is a protein one. So it is a three dimensional structure, three dimensional structure of protein. Apoenzyme is made up of three dimensional structure of protein. Okay. Okay, you see that, you see that apoenzymes, uh, that is a three dimensional. So I am doing like this three dimensional. Okay, three dimensional. You see that. These are the three-dimensional, as it is a three-dimensional structure, three-dimensional structure of protein. You see that there might be different pockets. Here is a one pocket. You see that. Here is a one pocket. Here is a another pocket. Here is also a one pocket. So there are so many pockets in that of a 3D structure. 3D structure. That is 3D structure. And these pockets are called what? These pockets are called active site. Okay, active site. I have already told you that in that of a tertiary structure, this is the three-dimensional structure means this is the tertiary structure. Okay, tertiary structure, tertiary structure. And there are so many pockets are there. These pockets are meant for that of a, that is attachment of substrate. This is the substrate that to be attached Okay, substrate that to be attached. Here is that of substrate. That substrate will be attached. That means they are completely specific in nature. That means if glucose will be to be attached with that of active side, only glucose will be attached. If fructose to be attached, only fructose to be attached. If they are liking for that of galactose, only galactose to be attached. Okay, so they are, that means they are completely specific in nature only the particular substrate for which they have liking. That means they will have to be attached. Okay. For which they have, they are liking for the particular substrate that to be attached. So, there are so many active sites as apoenzymes are protein, in, are protein, are protein part. So, they are three-dimensional structure. So, they are three-dimensional structure and this is the tertiary structure. As the tertiary structure have so many active sites, these active sites will have to take the receive the substrate for that of biochemical reaction. So that so these are the apoenzymes. And for that of apoenzymes, how apoenzymes will have to be um, carry out its function? It will have to take the support of certain cofactor. One cofactor is that of prosthetic group. Prosthetic group always attached with that of apoenzyme. That means prosthetic group is always attached with that of enzymes for all types. 
for all times whether by chemical reaction going on or not going on it is always attached so prosthetic group and the prosthetic groups are firmly attached with that of apo enzymes okay firmly attached with that of apo enzymes and but coenzymes but coenzymes are not firmly attached that means they are loosely attached and the coenzymes are loosely attached and they are only attached at the time of a biochemical reactions by chemical reactions and those are the metal ions some certain metal ions they are helpful for that of they are helpful for that of apo enzymes because apo enzymes depend upon certain metal ions to carry out their functions now we'll have to know about that of you will have to know about that of a prosthetic group okay prosthetic group then we'll have to know about the difference between apo enzymes and coenzymes then we'll have to know that certain vitamins in coenzymes coenzymes can carry out its function with the help of certain vitamins vitamins especially water soluble vitamins like that of uh, that is vitamin b1 b2 b3 and that of uh, b5 b12 okay all such enzymes are related to that of uh, all such vitamins are related to that of uh, coenzymes and metal ions metal ions like that of molybdenum like that of zinc iron magnesium okay such metal ions are required for that of uh, apo enzymes to function now we will have to know about that of uh, about that of uh, prosthetic group okay prosthetic group you see that that prosthetic group we will have to know about that prosthetic groups are organic compounds basically that prosthetic group you will see that prosthetic groups are organic compound you write on that prosthetic group prosthetic group prosthetic groups are organic compounds they are organic compounds they are organic compounds first point is that they are organic compounds and they are distinguished for other cofactor they are tightly binding they are tightly binding are tightly are tightly binding are tightly binding with apo enzyme okay are tightly bind with apo enzymes tightly bind with that of apo enzymes okay and uh, that the prosthetic groups example the example of prosthetic groups is that of one is that of hem you see that that is hemoglobin that is the iron part of hemoglobin but a hem that is hem of hemoglobin that is hem of hem of hemoglobin okay that is hemoglobin and uh, that is that is hem is a group of that of hemoglobin it is a prosthetic group it is a prosthetic group that means hem of hemoglobin is a prosthetic group okay prosthetic group then we will have to know about that of biotin of carboxylase okay that is biotin another one is biotin of carboxylase xylase that is hem of that of catalase also that is catalase enzymes that is hem also hem group is also found in catalase enzymes hem is found in hemoglobin do you know that and uh, that is iron that is hem that is iron part and that is catalase that is catalase iron so that in catalase in that of catalase enzymes we will have to find the hem group and the biotin group is found in that of carboxylase enzymes that is biotin of carboxylase another one is that of flavin okay another one is that of flavin flavin of fat 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 means students that is flavin okay that is flavin flavin adenine dinucleotide that is what what stands for fat fat stands for that of flavin okay adenine adenine okay dinucleotide 
dinucleotide. That is fat. Okay. That is flavin of fat, biotin of carboxylase, MA of catalase. These are the prosthetic groups. These are the examples of prosthetic groups. Okay. So prosthetic groups are organic compounds are tightly binding with apo enzymes and the hemi that is hemi of catalase, biotin of carboxylase, flavin of fat. Fat stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. Flavin adenine dinucleotide that is fat. Fat stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. Okay. So these are that of hemi, biotin and flavin. These are the prosthetic example of prosthetic groups. And such groups are tightly binding with, with that of apo enzyme, such prosthetic groups. And uh, hemi is meant for that of cartilage en enzyme. And biotin is that of carboxylase enzymes. Flavin is that of a fat. Fat stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. Okay, these are the prosthetic groups. What are prosthetic groups? Prosthetic groups are organic compounds. Prosthetic groups are organic compounds. First point. Second point is that prosthetic groups are tightly are tightly binding with that of apoenzymes. And there are certain examples of that of prosthetic groups that is hemi of that of a uh, cartilage. Second one, biotin of carboxylase and flavin of fat. Fat stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. Okay. So these are that of a prosthetic groups. You will have to only remember that organic compound tightly binding with apoenzymes and a hemi of cartilage, biotin of carboxylase, flavin of fat. This much required for your examination point of view, what I have told. What I'm telling that is for examination point of view, not access required. Okay, only organic compounds are tightly bound with apo enzymes and hemi of cartilage, biotin of carboxylase, flavin of fat. This is very important, and we'll have to know about that of prosthetic groups. Then come to that of co enzymes. Okay, you'll have to know about that of co enzymes. Co enzyme students. Coenzymes are basically they are non-protein compounds. They are also that is coenzymes. Coenzymes. Coenzyme students, these are also that of these are also that of organic compounds. Coenzymes also organic compounds. They are also organic compounds. Like that of prosthetic group, coenzymes also. Organic compounds, okay. Organic compounds, and uh, that means they are that means they are loosely bound. That means are loosely bound, are loosely, okay, are loosely bound to apoenzyme, to apoenzymes, okay. Organ, they are organic compounds are loosely bound to. Apoenzymes. That is very important point that you have to remember. Apoenzymes and they are non-protein compound having some vitamins. Okay, are non, are non. Okay, are non-protein compound. Protein compounds having some vitamins. Having some vitamins. Okay, having some having some vitamins, hence, hence they are micromolecules, hence, hence they are micromolecules, okay, micromolecules. So a non-protein, a non-protein compound having some vitamins, hence they are micromolecules, micromolecules, okay, and we will have to know that which vitamins, that means which coenzymes support to that of a, which type of vitamin? That means vitamins which are related to that of coenzymes. And which vitamins are related to that of coenzymes? So, first of all, you have to remember that they are organic compounds. All coenzymes are organic compounds like that of prosthetic groups and they are loosely bound to apoenzymes, are non protein compound. Having but having some vitamins are non-protein compound having some vitamins because as non-protein, so they 
so they are dependent upon that of vitamins so the basic structure is that of vitamins hence they are micromolecules okay micromolecules and when coenzymes coenzymes are only present at the time of biochemical reaction okay are only present are only present when biochemical reaction biochemical reaction going on okay are only present are only present with are only present with a coenzyme a coenzyme when biochemical reactions are going on are going on okay and uh, when coenzymes will come out from apoenzymes that means no enzymatic activities will continue because enzymatic activities will stop as soon as as soon as as soon as coenzymes separate from apoenzymes okay so co is that co that means it will have to make contact when when it will have to break it is contact cooperation that means that means immediately immediately that means uh, that is uh, enzyme activities will be stopped okay enzyme activities will stop as soon as coenzyme separate from that of apoenzymes okay that point you have to remember are only present are only present with apoenzymes when biochemical reactions are going on okay after that after that it will not have any relation with that of the core enzyme that point you have to remember now we have to remember students that there are certain vitamins okay which vitamins each vitamins have the relations with that which coenzymes we will have to know about that of coenzymes and their vitamins okay vitamins first of all you know about that of vitamins vitamins and the coenzymes as they are non protein as they are non protein part they dependent upon the vitamins so they so the basement the basement is made by the vitamins so coenzyme coenzymes are also vitamins they are, that means vitamins they dependent they are vitamin in nature they are that means they are made up of the vitamins so which type of vitamin basically they are water soluble as i have told that coenzymes are bio micromolecules so they are water soluble so that all the water soluble vitamins water soluble vitamin students are just telling you that they are mines what they are means i just to that is here okay that is called vitamin that is b1 okay vitamin b1 b1 and uh, that is there yeah, means another one is that of niacin okay that is the riboflavin another one is that of riboflavin riboflavin that is b2 riboflavin after riboflavin that is the niacin 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 that is vitamin b3 that is b3 okay b3 another one is that of pantothenic acid okay another one is that of pantothenic acid acid that is b5 b5 okay pantothenic acid after that of that is cyanocobalamin that is cyanocobalamin cobalamin that is b12 that is vitamin b12 these are that of water soluble vitamins that is water soluble vitamins okay water soluble vitamins that is thiamine riboflavin niacin pantothenic acid and that is cyanocobalamin okay on the basis of that of that different coenzymes first of all you know about that of that is thiamine pyrophosphate which coenzymes thiamine that is thiamine pyrophosphate pyrophosphate that is thiamine pyrophosphate relates with that of that is 
B1. Okay, vitamin B1. Vitamin B1. That is thiamine. From name itself, thiamine B1. So thiamine pyrophosphate. That is TPP. TPP. Okay, thiamine. That is thiamine pyrophosphate relates with that of thiamine. That is B1. Then you will have to come to that of riboflavin. I have told you that flavin, that is riboflavin, that is flavin. Adenine, dinucleotide. Okay, so uh, dinucleotide, dinucleotide, nucleotide. Okay, dinucleotide. That is dinucleotide. That is carbon adenine dinucleotide. That is a three part. Okay, so riboflavin, which coenzymes? So vitamin B two is related with the fat. Carbon adenine. Dinucleotide that is fat. Okay, then come to that of niacin. That is that is hydrogen. That is oxidation and that is NAD. That is niacin is that of NAD. NAD, NAD stands for that of nicotinic dinucleotide. That is nicotinic adenine. Adenine, dinucleotide, nucleotide. Okay, nicotine adenine, dinucleotide. Okay, that is dinucleotide. That is nicotine amide. Okay, that is nicotine amide, amide adenine dinucleotide. Nicotine, nicotine amide dinucleotide. Nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. That is NAD. That is NAD. Okay, NAD. And niacin. And that is pantothenic acid. That means which one is that? The pantothenic acid. That is for coenzyme. That is coenzyme A. Coenzyme A. That is pantothenic acid relates with that of coenzyme A. And there, that is cyanocobalamin, that is vitamin B12, that is coenzyme B12. That name itself coenzyme B12. Okay. So these are the coenzymes, and these coenzymes are that of that that coenzymes are related to that of certain vitamins. So that you see that all coenzymes are of vitamins. So, which vitamins are of which coenzymes? That is thiamine pyrophosphate. That is TPP relates with that of thiamine. From name itself, you can have to guess. Okay, sir, so right side whiteboard is not visible. Okay, so you see that. You see that. Now visible students? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, you see that. Vitamins, coenzymes. You see that. That is thiamine. Vitamin B1 is related with thiamine pyrophosphate. Which coenzymes relate with vitamin B1? That is thiamine pyrophosphate TPP. Which which coenzymes relates with that of vitamins B2? That is flavin, adenine, dinucleotide. That is fat. That is the riboflavins. That means which vitamins relates with that of coenzymes NAD? That is NAD with vitamin B3. That is niacin. NAD is nicotine. That is nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. Dinucleotide. Okay, dinucleotide. That is NAD. Then pantothenic acid. Pantothenic acid. That is B5. That is coenzyme A. Okay, pantothenic acid that is coenzyme A, and as cyanocobalamin B12 that relates with that of coenzymes B12. Okay, coenzymes B12. From name itself, you can have to guess. Coenzyme B12, pantho that is cyanocobalamin. If question will ask cyanocobalamin, <laughs> that is coenzyme B12. From B12, we can have to mark it that cyanocobalamin is known as that of a Vitamin B12, so then coenzyme B12. So you have to remember that coenzymes relates with that of certain vitamins. That is 
these are the coenzymes and these are the vitamins. So you have to remember that it is on that of a matching question, match the columns. On the basis of match the columns, you can easily answer riboflavin, that is fat, flavin. You have to add, add nicot nicotinamide, you can niacin from that of niacin, you can have to guess nicotin. And the coenzyme A, that is, you have to remember because that is pancrothenic acid B5 in a with that of coenzyme A. Okay, that's point you have to remember. These coenzymes relate with that of vitamins. That you have to remember. That is vitamin coenzymes. Again, you will have to know about that of a, that is metal ions. Okay, there are certain metal ions. You know about that of prosthetic group. You know about that of a, a coenzymes with that of vitamins, related vitamins. And now we'll have to know about that of a metal ions. How certain metal ions are helpful for that of carrying out biochemical reaction because uh, coenzymes depend upon that of metal ions for a different type of uh, chemical reaction, biochemical reaction that we'll have to know. So you'll have to know about that of a metal ions with related with related enzymes. Okay, that is metal ions with that of related enzymes. So first you have to make that metal ions. Metal ions and that of related related enzymes. Enzymes. Okay, related enzymes. Metal ions. First of all, we'll have to know about that of zinc. That is J then two plus. Okay, zinc. That that is in your NCERT book, zinc has been given. That is carboxy peptidase. Which enzymes depends upon zinc? That is carbo, carboxy peptidase. Peptidase. Okay. That is carboxy peptidase. That is metal. Another one is that of, uh, that is which one is the fastest enzyme in the living world, students? Jaimes. Jaimes. Uh, carbonic anhydrase. So this one also depends upon that of zinc. That is carbonic anhydrase. Hydrates. Okay, anhydrase. This one also depends upon that of zinc. So these two enzymes depend upon zinc for carrying out that of uh, enzymatic activities. Okay, and uh, then we will have to know about that of zinc. Uh, then we'll have to know about that of uh, that is molybdenums, okay? Molybdenums, that is a more. Molybdenums and iron, AP. Both that of uh, MO, AP, that depend upon that of nitrogenase. That is nitrogenase. You know that that enzymes that is play pivotal role in that of uh, that is nitrogen fixation. In nitrogen fixation, which enzymes play pivotal role? That is nitrogenase. So nitrogenase depend upon a more AP, that is molybdenums as well as iron. Okay, it depends upon that of molybdenum and iron for carrying out that of nitrogen fixation. So nitrogenase enzymes depend upon two metal ions. One is molybdenums, another one is that of iron. It is very important, students, that you must have to remember, okay? And nickel, then we'll have to know about that of nickel. Nickel, that is urease, that is urease enzymes, urease enzymes. On that of urease enzymes, from that of study of urease enzymes, that Sumner, Sumner named that, Sumner named that enzymes are proteinaceous in nature. Okay, on studying urease enzymes, on studying urease enzymes, that Sumner, Sumner explained that enzymes are proteinaceous in nature. That means Sumner, Sumner scientist who studied urease enzymes and came into conclusion that all enzymes are proteinaceous in nature. Okay, so that urease enzymes, that is. Urease enzyme depends upon the cell for carrying out their activities. Okay, activities. Then we will have to know that is molybdenum. That you are seeing that molybdenum. Molybdenum only for that of uh, dinitrogen. Okay, that is 
that molybdenum is for that are for nitrogenase dinitrogenase that is the dinitrogenase that dinitrogenase that means uh, that uh, whenever we we'll have to that nitrogen after nitric you have known that uh, for nitrogen for that nitrogen ammonia is made after ammonia that means what you we'll have to do that is the nitrite then nitrate then deammonification that means in that process that means in deammonification process which which uh, that is which in the required that is in nitrogenase enzymes okay for that of a deammonification process and the insas process which enzymes is helpful that is which enzyme is helpful that is molybdenum not iron molybdenum and iron for nitrogenase but for dinitrogenase only molybdenum is required okay molybdenum and iron are helpful for that of a nitrogen fixation for denitrification for denitrification that denitrification is carried out by dinitrogenase enzymes dinitrogenase enzyme depends upon which metal ion that is molybdenum that is molybdenum that you will have to remember but for nitrogenase both molybdenum and iron are required okay nickel gun then come to that of magnesium that is magnesium mg2 plus it is that i have told you that that is rubisco have you know that of rubisco that rubisco enzymes okay that is rubisco that is rubisco enzymes this enzymes rubisco what that is rubisco that rubisco enzymes completely depend upon that of magnesium okay so rubisco enzymes completely depends upon that of magnesium so question will be asked that rubisco depends upon which of the following metal ions answer will be magnesium magnesium for that of urea which metal ion nickel for that of uh, that is uh, that is uh, nitrogenase nitrogenase depend upon two that is two metal ions which these two metal ions molybdenum and iron and iron so okay and the dinitrogenase enzymes depend upon which metal ion molybdenum molybdenum very good molybdenum and for carboxy peptidase as well as carbonic that is carbonic anhydrase which is metal ion is required zinc two plus very good that is g g molybdenum iron molybdenum only nickel and that of magnesium so okay magnesium and the hexokinase hexokinase that is five that is hexokinase another one is that of hexokinase hexokinase it is the first enzymes which play important role in that of glycolysis process that is hexokinase all kinase enzymes relates all kinase enzymes relates with that of magnesium that you will have to remember that is magnesium so okay magnesium then we will have to know about that of iron i iron that is peroxidase and the cytochrome oxidase that is pero that is iron that is iron iron depend upon that of iron depend upon that of catalase and the peroxidase that is catalase for catalase and peroxidase okay that is oxidase peroxidase that is catalase that is iron ap2 depends upon that of catalase enzymes and then that is peroxidase enzymes that is ap2 so sure, you have remembered that one 1 2 3 4 5 then another two i'm just writing you just have you have written or you have to get in note so you have to remember that zinc the related enzymes carboxypeptidase carbonic anhydrase molybdenum only dinitrogenase molybdenum iron combined for that of nitrogenase nickel is that for urease and magnesium for rubisco and hexokinase and iron for catalase and then peroxidase okay then we will have to know about that of another two to uh, another three metal ions okay another three metal ions we will have to discuss that metal ion students that is copper 
Okay, you come to that of uh, copper. Copper that is most important metal ions for that of uh, cytochrome oxidase. That is cytochrome oxidase. Oxidase. Okay, that is copper. Copper related enzyme is cytochrome oxidase. That is copper. Then we will come to that of uh, after copper. That is come to that of uh, potassium. Potassium. Potassium relates with that of a pyruvate. Okay, pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase, that is potassium. Potassium, that is K plus, that is pyruvate kinase. And another one is that of a manganese. Okay, that is manganese. That is manganese. That is manganese, you will have to know about that of a Arginase and ribonucleotide reductase. Arginase. That is arginase enzymes and a ribonucleotide nucleotide reductase. Reductase. Okay. So copper, potassium, and a manganese. Copper is for cytochrome oxidase. Potassium for pyruvate kinase. Manganese for arginate, another one is ribonucleotide eridoptase. Okay, ribonucleotide eridoptase. These are the these are that of enzymes and a related metal ion. That is related enzymes and metal ions related enzymes that you have to remember. Okay, copper cytochrome oxidase, that is potassium pyruvate kinase, and the manganese arginate and a ribonucleotide. Reductase. Okay, students, now we'll have to know about that difference between that of apoenzymes and coenzymes. Okay, you'll have to know about the difference between apoenzymes and coenzymes. So that now we'll have to know about that of difference of apoenzymes and coenzymes. That you see that apoenzymes and the coenzymes. Apoenzyme to that of a coenzyme. Okay, coenzymes. We'll have to start with that of apoenzymes. Enzymes which act only in the presence of cofactor. Okay, enzymes. Enzymes which act, which act. On the presence of on the presence of cofactors. On the presence of cofactors. Enzymes which act only in the presence of enzymes which act only that is in the presence of cofactors. Without cofactors, apo enzymes cannot work. Okay, cannot sustain, cannot carry out any activities. Without the support of cofactors. So, enzymes which act only in the presence of cofactor, they are apoenzymes. Okay, apoenzymes are enzymes which act only in the presence of cofactor. Then we will have to know maybe, maybe some metal ions or complex organic compounds that make an apoenzymes functions. Okay, and the coenzymes may be. Maybe some metal ions. Okay, maybe some metal ions, maybe some or complex organic compounds, or complex organic compounds, or complex organic compounds. Okay, or some complex organic compounds that make up a coenzyme functional. Okay, that make that make apoenzyme functional. Okay, so that apoenzymes in the presence of cofactor can carry out its operation. But coenzymes will depend upon metal ions or complex organic compounds, organic compounds, that is prosthetic groups, okay, that is prosthetic group or that of a or metal ion, prosthetic group or metal ions 
that make apo enzyme functional okay that make apo enzyme functional so apo enzymes are enzymes which act only in the presence of cofactor co enzymes may be some metal ions or complex organic compound that make apo enzyme functional apo enzyme can make functional only only depending upon metal ion or complex organic compounds without the support of metal ions or or complex organic compounds that apo enzymes cannot be functional okay so support of metal ions and complex organic compounds are very essential for running the co enzymes that is co enzymes rightly okay then come to that of second point second point you will have to know that are protein compounds are protein compounds are protein compounds hence okay our protein uh, protein compounds hence that is macromolecules compounds hence hence are macromolecules hence are macromolecules they are macromolecules okay but here coenzymes coenzymes are non non protein compounds are non are non protein compounds are non protein compounds compound having vitamins okay having vitamins are non protein compound having vitamins so they are so they are micromolecules so they are micromolecules okay so coenzymes coenzymes so apoenzymes are macromolecules coenzymes are that of a micromolecule that is basic difference apoenzymes are made up of proteins so they are protein compounds so they are macromolecules coenzymes are vitamins so they are micromolecules okay micromolecules then come to that of third point are thermolabins okay apoenzymes are are thermolabins thermolabins means students they will have to be okay that is readily destroyed or that of denatured denatured by heat okay that is thermolabin means easily readily that is readily denatured denatured by heat by heat denatured or destroyed or destroyed by heat that is called thermolabin okay that is stock polymerase example is that of a stock polymerase that is stock polymerase stock polymerase is enzymes which is thermolabin because such enzyme can be denatured or destroyed by heat okay so that is thermolabin so thermolabin if this part is thermolabin then it will be thermostable so coenzymes are are thermostable are thermostable they can be denatured or destroyed by heat okay so they are thermostable they are thermolabin thermolabin l a b i l e they they are readily denatured and destroyed by heat but they are not they are thermostable they are not denatured by the heat okay they are thermostable coenzymes are thermostable whereas apo enzymes are thermolabil okay thermolabil that point you must have to remember then conduct enzymatic actions and uh, that is that is conduct these are conduct conduct enzyme activities okay conduct enzyme activities apo enzyme conduct enzyme activities but that of co enzymes that co enzymes mold the activities okay that means mold 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 or remove or remove mold or remove from the activities from the activities activities okay just i am explaining again that uh, apo enzymes enzymes which act only in the presence of cofactor 
what will be coenzymes may be some metal ions or complex organic compound that make a coenzymes functional okay the second point that our protein compounds as they are protein compounds they are macromolecules but they are non protein compounds so they based on vitamin so they are micromolecules third point is that third point is that are thermolabile that means they can be denatured or destroyed by heat but coenzymes are thermostable thermostable fourth point is that fourth point is that a coenzymes conduct enzyme activities a coenzyme conduct activities but coenzymes mold or remove from the activities they can mold the activities or they can remove from the activities okay but they are but they conduct uh, a coenzyme always conduct activities but coenzymes mold activities or remove from the activities okay that's difference between a coenzymes and coenzymes okay students so a coenzymes and coenzymes as as that as that cofactor holo enzymes are made up of uh, that is a coenzymes and uh, that of uh, that is holo enzymes made up of a coenzymes and cofactor a coenzymes are protein nature coenzymes are non protein in nature and uh, coenzymes made of prosthetic groups and that of uh, Uh, cofactor made up of prosthetic group coenzymes and metal ions you know about different metal ions you know about that of coenzymes with that of related vitamins because they completely depend upon vitamins for carrying out their activities and the prosthetic group which are bindly tied to that of bindly fit or tight uh, that is tightened to that of uh, a coenzymes and uh, they are the they form the basement membrane for that of uh, uh, that is any activities by chemical reactions and after that what i have told about you that that coenzymes coenzymes can remain as soon that means that means it will help to that of a uh, biochemical reaction biochemical reactions can be carried out with the help of that of uh, coenzymes if coenzymes will separate from that of a uh, uh, coenzymes then there will be no chemical reaction will take place so chemical reaction absolutely depends upon that of uh, help of coenzymes then we know about that of uh, coenzymes and coenzymes by this way i have completed the structure of uh, enzymes then at the evening sessions i will have to complete the classification of enzymes that enzymes um, enzymes are divided into six major groups that will have to know about that six major groups and about their classifications and then we will have to know about that some students have requested me to have uh, doubts in that of amino acids and that of uh, lipids i'll have to complete that one this portions of amino acids and lipids in this uh, evening session so by this way i will have to complete this chapter from friday onwards we will have to start a new chapter that chapter is a cell division okay we will have to go to that of new chapter of cell division from friday onwards so by today and by this evening i will have to complete this chapter and also clear your doubts that persist in that of portion of amino acids and uh, lipids okay students now come to that of uh, two to three questions we will have to do okay first you come to that consider the following okay come to that of question consider the following statement and select the correct one first question is consider the following statement consider the following statement statements and select the right ones and select the right ones i will have to tell you about that of four statements four statements we will have to choose the two ones which are correct and the other two are incorrect okay only choose the right ones the first is 
that is purines are six membered molecules that purines purines are six membered molecules okay then pyrimidines are nine membered molecules then come to that of a triploid okay that uracil is found in rna uracil is found in rna rna then that uh, fourth statement is that the guanine pair with cytosine guanine pairs with cytosine by triple hydrogen bond by triple hydrogen bonds okay so the correct statement that correct statement are i and the iie b iie and the triple i c triple i and i b d i and the i b students so the right answer yes anamika c sanbe yes c brilliant answer anamika and sanbe okay brilliant answer sanbe s yes. abhilips also right answer abhilips apol congratulation alib also right answer and beula khora right smaranika patra right answer brilliant answer brilliant answer sudham sudas also right answer adyasa dubey right jyotiranjan sahu so late jyoti okay right answer and bhagwan hembram bhagwat hembram also right answer brilliant answer bhagwat okay swayam pragya sahu also right answer okay that brilliant answer by swayam pragya okay that that you see that purines are six membered molecule wrong it is a nine membered molecule pyrimidines are nine membered molecule wrong it is a six membered molecules uracil found in rna true okay and uh, that is guanine pairs with cytosine by triple hydrogen bond this is also true so statement i and i b are true so the answer will be c brilliant answer by anamika sanvi and other students who participated congratulations for brilliant answer okay then come to that of question number 2 then come to that of uh, question number Two. Question number two is that which of the following is not a small molecule? That is question number two. Which of the following? Which of the following is not a small molecule? Okay, small molecule. That is micro molecule. Small means what? Micro. That is small molecule. That is a type of question uh, to confuse you. Okay, so that I have written instead of micro, I have written small. So don't mind. Okay, so that option you are citing you that amino acid A, A for amino acid, B for nucleotide. nucleotide okay and the uh, c for that of uh, fatty acid fatty acid and d for is that of uh, nucleic acid hey, students show me the answer yes jyotiranjan sahu right answer manali sir out try right answer Tushar Ranjan, wrong, wrong answer. Smaranika Patra, wrong answer. Okay, wrong answer. Aliba Priyadarshini, wrong answer. Abhilip Sapal, wrong answer. Okay, wrong answer. So the students uh, that were given that of right answer, 
is that of Jyotiranjan and Monalisha Rautrai. Smaranika Patra, right answer. Right answer, students. I'm showing you that. Okay. You see that. Amino acid. Amino acid that is part of protein. So they are micromolecules. Nucleotides. Nucleotides that is DNA, RNA are made up of nucleotides. So these are the micromolecules. And uh, fatty acid. That means all lipids are made of fatty acids. So these are also micromolecules. But nucleic acid, okay, all nucleotides are made of, nucleic acid are made up of nucleotide. So nucleotide is that of, a, that is a large molecule. It is not a small molecule. It is a large molecule. But fatty acid, nucleotide, amino acid are that of, they are components of a, different macromolecules. But nucleic acid itself is a macromolecule. So right answer is D. Okay, D. Thank you to, that is, that is Jyotiranjan and that of, uh, that is Smaranika and Monalisha Rautrai given the right answer. Okay, so you have to remember nucleic acid is that of a macromolecule. It is a large molecule. Amino acid, nucleotide, fatty acid, they are parts of that of macromolecules. Okay, so they are micromolecules which help in that of composition of a macromolecule. So right answer is nucleic acid. The last question of today that I am just asking you to you that you are now ready. Okay, for that of question number three. In afternoon sessions, we will have to do the seven questions. That is in the evening session, we will have to do all the seven questions. Okay. So question number three, which of the following is not a characteristic of Watson Creek model? Which of the following? Which of the following is not a characteristic? A characteristic of Watson and Creek model. Creek model. Okay. Watson and Creek model. Very carefully you have to answer. Okay. First point is that of a double helix DNA. Option A. Double helix DNA. Okay. The first option double helix DNA. Then that of a parallel nature of polynucleotide strands. Parallel nature of only nucleotide plants. Okay. Then option C that student sugar phosphate sugar chain backbone. Okay. Sugar phosphate. Sugar chain sugar. Sugar chain backbone. Backbone and the option B is that of uh, the perpendicular nature of nitrogen base. Perpendicular, perpendicular nature of nitrogen bases on okay on sugar phosphate sugar chain. Which is the right answer? Yes. Tushar Ranjan, I could not see again. Again, Tushar. Swarnika Patra, B, B. Tushar Ranjan, A, no wrong answer. Aliba, right. Jati Ranjan, right. Tushar Ranjan, Mehr. Adyasa Dubey, wrong answer. That is Sandhi Parija. No, San yes, Sandhi Parija, right answer. Anamika Kumari, right answer. Beula Khora, right answer. Abhilip Sapal, right answer. Okay, Monalisa Rautra, Adyasa Dubey. Wrong answer, Adyasa. <coughs> okay, I'm just explaining you, students, that uh, Sudan Sudas, option B, right answer, Sudan Su. Okay, Sudan Su, right answer. You see that, students, which of the following is not a characteristic of Watson Creek model? Okay, that double helix structure. I have told you that, okay, that double helix structure. And the parallel nature of polynucleotide, not parallel, 
they are anti parallel okay that nucleotides i have drawn that nucleotides on that day one is this type another will be this type this is anti parallel nature okay anti parallel nature this is one and it is reverse side that is anti parallel nature so this one is wrong the right answer would be anti parallel nature of polynucleotide sugar phosphate sugar chain backbone you know that that backbone is sugar phosphate sugar chain and perpendicular nitrogen base this is one nitrogen base this is this base this base is perpendicular to each other so perpendicular nitrogen base and they are made up of sugar sugar phosphate i have told you that these are the monosaccharide made up of that of monosaccharide okay monosaccharide so this one is right this one is right this one is right so which one is that of not a characteristic that is parallel nature answer would be anti parallel nature so brilliant answer by the students thank you very much thank you students in the evening sessions i'll have to do the seven questions okay seven question first of all i'll finish the classification of enzymes it will take 15 to maximum 30 minutes after that we will have to clear your doubt for that of uh, that of uh, amino acids and lipids and then i will have to do that of question 7 seven question in the evening session we will have to do thank you very much students thank you thank, thank you for thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir